Hey kids, Peter Von Panda here. Wanted to tell you uh, that the Apple Watch is going to be upgradable. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and if I'm wrong, I will eat my hat. And when I say hat, I mean a chocolatey treat. Uh, the Apple Watch, as you know, is not out yet. Uh, they will be in consumers' hands on April 24th, and Apple has been mum about uh, whether the Apple Watch is upgradable. But I want to show you three things here, three points that I think uh, conclusively determine that the Apple Watch is going to be upgraded. So, first of all, uh, there is a required core design to the Apple Watch that you really can't deviate from as long as you want to keep the features. So uh, the big one is the heartbeat and biometric sensor in the middle. So you want that to be pressed uh, right on the wrist. You need a kind of a, a flush, um, uh, uninhibited uh, uh, contact with the skin. You'll notice that uh, that, that, that center ceramic uh, backing is raised to make sure that the case itself doesn't uh, keep the uh, the 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 sensors uh, above the skin or out of contact, um, you know, and that's going to be central. The 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 equipment and the hardware and all the components sit on top of it, so it's basically kind of like a little piece of uh, a UFO stuck to the bottom of a computer motherboard. So you know that general design can't really change, and so I think that all future designs will pretty much use the same um, the same configuration and thus you've kind of built the shape of it already and all following models are going to use that same secondly there's also some case limitations because of the control pieces on it so the crown and the home button you know, as I was thinking about this, why didn't they make a round face? Well, one of the problems is that on a round watch, the crown is right in the middle, kind of at that uh, equator line. But then if you need another button, you'd either have to put it above or below, kind of like a, a pusher for a complication. And that's not very elegant. And it changes the angle you're pushing. And in most watches, you don't use them that often. But in this case, it puts both of them uh, kind of in that same vertical line and you're not going to really change that. I don't think there's going to be any uh, changes to the overall shape of the watch because you can't change the location of those control elements without uh, going to a completely different watch or supporting a completely different type of, of design. Uh, secondly, the, the big piece here is that the watch uses modular components. So as you saw in the demonstration or the unveiling, they are using a system on a chip uh, in this particular product uh, that's not really um, something they've used in other Apple products and they kind of uh, give credit to um, the need to make the watch as waterproof as possible or, or uh, protected from the elements as possible but I think it also makes it very easy to remove individual components because they aren't all intricately interlinked and soldered together on a single uh, motherboard this allows for you to remove basically the weakest part of the um, the system, which would be the processor, uh, without having to remove potentially the battery or the taptic sensor uh, or the uh, the biometric sensors or any of that. So I think this is the key that it's going to be upgradable because of the the modularity of the components. It's going to make it very serviceable, as you saw. You know, there, there are a number of images going around showing kind of the 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 inside of the watch, and as you can see, they are uh, you know very distinct. It also makes it look like once you get the the screen off, you have access to all of the components. I would assume some of that is to service it, um, and so if you have problems, it's kind of like an iPhone. Um, you can take off the screen and and do a lot of things, but I, you you notice that. Um, they are all, the, none, nothing is really stacked on top of each other and you can get to each individual component um, without having to remove everything else. So I think it makes it quite serviceable, but that makes it very easy to upgrade. Lastly, and this is the critical piece that I think no one's talked about, is that the high-end market is going to dictate an 
uh, a requirement for upgradability. And the reason here is there are lots of watches in the ten dollars to $20,000 range. I picked one of my favorites here, uh, a Louis Moynet. And the, the problem is there's a lot of watches. These are fashion statements. They're usually made out of high-end materials like precious metals. Um, the Apple Watch is going to be no difference, uh, different, but the, the value in the high-end watches is in the case. And so uh, from my perspective, you know, you have all this gold or rose gold or whatever you, you're going to get when you spend a lot of money on the Apple Watch. Uh, but, you, but for that price, you can't be expected to have a device that is going to be obsolete in a year. Or, and, it's not gonna, and it can't be obsolete uh, when the next generation comes out, even if it's two or three years down the road. So to me, this says... You know, Apple is saying to the people who are going to spend ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a watch that um, we maybe haven't said it officially, but we promise you that that kind of expenditure is not going to be a wasted one-year vanity item. You are going to be able to keep this watch just like other um, high-end timepieces, enjoy it, and not have to worry about the longevity of it because we are going to make it upgradable. So you don't. Uh, make a watch at this price point that isn't upgradable because you've taken the one percenters and you've made them very unhappy and you've required them to spend a lot of money on a, a brand new watch. And in this case, uh, it's just the case really that holds all of that intrinsic value. And so it makes sense to make that case the core piece that will continue to persist from year to year and everything inside of that watch uh, be replaceable. Now, what I suspect is that the lower end to replace uh, the components in the watch won't make a lot of sense. So the $350, $400 watch, by the time you get the, a new uh, system on a chip in there and the labor, you're probably just better off buying the new low-end watch and selling your old one. But in the high end, to, to replace the, kind of the processor for, let's say, four or $500, it's going to make a lot of sense. It's a small percentage of the overall cost of the watch uh, to keep it up, up to date and, uh, and keep it current, and you're not changing anything else about the watch. So that's why I think, I know a lot of people have said, I'm not going to buy the watch, I'm going to wait for the second generation, uh, it'll probably look better, it'll probably be faster. I think it'll be faster, but it won't look any different. It won't be like the iPad 1 to the iPad 2 where there was a significant form factor design. I think this design is going to persist for years and the electronic components of it will be upgradable by Apple. Just a guess based on evidence and I'm a genius. Peter Von Panda. Out.